Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and in today's video, I want to explain Daniel's timelines. We'll look at all of them, but the one we'll spend the most time on is on his 70-week timeline that we read about in Daniel chapter 9, as we talk about the mark of the beast and who it is whose name equals 666. It always tends to start a lot of debate centered around the fall of Jerusalem back in about 69 AD. Well, we got a question from a viewer on how that fits in biblical prophecy. And the answer to that question was in Daniel chapter nine. So we're gonna start down here in about verse 24, and we're gonna look at how all it is played out as the prophecies were fulfilled. Now, verse 24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for inequity, to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So you see how important this is to get rid of the false doctrines around these prophecies, because what we're talking about here is the kingdom of heaven and Anyone who believes or states that all of these prophecies were fulfilled back in about 70 AD would believe that we are either now in the kingdom of heaven or that the 1000 years prophesied by the Apostle John in the book of Revelation have already been completed. In other words, the kingdom of heaven period is over. It would have ended 1000 years after the fall of the second temple. So now, understanding biblical prophecy, that would mean that the time we're living in now is after the whole planet has been destroyed. Now, of course, none of that makes sense. So let's look at this a little bit closer. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. So what we understand here is that these 70 weeks are not only going to be in effect on our father's people, but on Jerusalem as well. And it says this time will be used to finish the transgression. Now, the transgression that he's talking about is the sin of Adam and Eve when they broke the commandment and got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Well, we understand that the kingdom of heaven includes us going back to that Garden of Eden state. So anybody who believes all of these prophecies have been fulfilled would also believe that we are in the Garden of Eden or something like that. But anyway, it says, and to make an end of sins. And I believe this is where their confusion comes in is because they want to believe that they don't live in sin now. I mean, there are some churches who teaches that sin has been done away with altogether and there's no way for a believer to sin. So I guess for them to believe that they are living a sinless life, they have to believe that this prophecy has been fulfilled. So they look to the events back there in the first century instead of looking to any futuristic event. Like, for instance, right here where it says and to make reconciliation for inequity. This right here is talking about the prophetic fulfillment of atonement day. That apocalyptic event that promises to thrust millions, if not billions of people into the spirit world at one time. That's the day when a lot of these people who believe that they're living sinless lives and that none of their actions are counted as sin will be removed from the planet altogether. Some of them are looking forward to that day. So let's just go on. It says, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. This is talking about the time in which there will be no sin. Like we said, all wickedness will be removed during the reconciliation for inequity. And after that, we will be under the new covenant where our conscience will be our guides, just like it was back in the Garden of Eden. We'll get our instruction from the inside and then we'll be living lives of everlasting righteousness. But it goes on to say, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. This is talking about the return of the Messiah 
and the kingdom of heaven age. So like we said, anybody who believes that this stuff has already been fulfilled believes that we're in the kingdom of heaven now. That thousand year period when the Messiah rules the earth. But since that period is only supposed to last for a thousand years, it would have ended, like we said, around 1070 AD. So maybe they think we're in hell now. Or maybe they think we're the left behind or something like that. I don't know. Let's look back over at the timeline and let's see what it's talking about. These 70 weeks start back with the decree given by Darius II. Now, of course, there was three decrees. The decree by Cyrus didn't get the temple built because of some Samaritans who were jealous that they weren't allowed to participate in the building of the temple. And it was only the decree by King Darius who had found the decree by Cyrus and decided to reinitiate it that the temple was built. So that particular decree was made in 424 BC. They actually finished the work in 417 BC. But anyway, it was in 424 that actually started the clock that we read about over there in Daniel. Like we read about down in verse 25, which says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks and the street shall be built again and the wall even in tribulous times. So first thing we notice is that even though verse 24 said that there are 70 weeks determined, verse 25 is only talking about 69 weeks. There are seven weeks plus three score and two weeks that includes the construction of the second temple, the appearance of the Messiah, the prince. And then it goes on to talk about how the temple will be rebuilt again and the walls. But this time it's talking about in tribulous times. So over here on our timeline, you have the decree in 424. And then 62 weeks later, you have the appearance of the Messiah who showed up at the temple there at 12 years old. That would have been 11 AD and the start of the 62nd week. And the next period that we hear about is 49 years later, which takes us to 60 AD, which was when Jerusalem was captured right before they destroyed the city. But notice back over here after the 62nd week, how during that period from 11 AD to 60 AD, we had the Messiah being destroyed there in about 32 AD. That's what verse 26 is talking about when it says after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So you have 62 weeks that go by after the decree is made that the Messiah is cut off. So that time period includes the time in which he first appeared, the time in which he was crucified and the time in which the disciples were persecuted all the way up to. 60 AD when they captured Jerusalem and of course they went on to destroy the whole city and they burned down the sanctuary and this flood that they're talking about is all out of the wars around that period and until the end of the war desolations are determined well of course this war lasted until all of the Israelites left Jerusalem altogether and we see that talked about down in verse 27 which says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, for many of these understandings, I had to rely on the Septuagint translation of the scripture which reads a little bit differently when it says, and on the temple, the abomination of desolation. 
So what that's talking about is how in the middle of this 70th week, we would see the abomination of desolation or the dome of the rock placed on the Temple Mount. Well, that didn't happen to 686 AD. And to understand that, we must understand that the 70th week was not 49 years long, but is actually four times 490 years long, taking us from the year 67 AD when the temple was destroyed altogether to the year 2027 AD. So those who want to believe that everything has happened already and that we're living in the kingdom of heaven right now, what they're not understanding is that this prophecy was sealed up from Daniel and he did not get all of the information. He was only told about the 70 weeks, but he was not told about the two days that the Messiah prophesied about when he said that they would destroy the second temple and in two days he would raise it up again. Well, these two days that he's talking about was about 2000 years and it was after those two days are over that we'll see the construction of the third temple that should take place sometime around the year 2027. So that's what verse 27 is talking about when it says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This confirmation of the covenant would have started at the latest back in the year 2020 and will last for seven years. During this period, you had Israel's blessing that we read about in Daniel chapter 12, that being all part of the 1,290 days and the 1,335 days, which started back there when Nebuchadnezzar took away the daily sacrifice. Well, that happened in 605 BC. And when you fast forward 1,290 years, you see the Dome of the Rock that we talked about as the abomination of desolation. And when you fast forward another 1,335 years, you end up in about January of the year 2022. That's the time that the troubles ended for Israel as Jacob has made his conversion. And of course, that conversion was all part of what he's saying here, where he said he would confirm the covenant with many for one week. Jacob is converted to Israel when he takes on and starts being obedient to the covenant. But there is a lot going on in that week, that 2000 year period. You have Constantine who came in power in 312. We read about his reign in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7. This time times and half a time was 490 years times three and a half. That takes us from the year 312 when the Catholic Church started to scatter the holy people and ends in the year 2027 when Babylon will be destroyed. But also during that time, you had Pope Gregory, whose name equals 666 in Hebrew Germatria appeared in 1572, created a new calendar system and putting the mark of the beast on those whose names is not written in the book of life. That's not really one of Daniel's prophecies. We read about that one over in the book of Revelation. But Daniel did prophesy about the third testament of the Bible that would come in 1884. We just have to understand what Daniel was talking about in chapter eight when he was talking about the 2,300 days that would pass before the sanctuary would be cleansed. That timeline started in the year 417 when the daily sacrifice had been restored and ends in 1884 when the Messiah returns as the third testament of the Bible, which we read about in the book of Revelation where John told us that he will return as the word of God. That word of God is the third testament of the Bible. But anyway, I just wanted to share some of these prophecies with you guys and kind of getting my feet wet with this new software program. It may need a little bit of tweaking. So if you have something to add, please put it in the comment section and I'll see you down there.